your tutor Starla here today to talk about how to use the refractometer. This is a piece of equipment that once you get it you are going to love it because it gives you a really definitive number that you can use for identification of a gemstone. The tricky part is getting a really true reading. So what refraction is, is it's the bending of light as it enters into a gemstone and a refractive index or the number that we get is basically the ratio of the speed of light in air versus the speed of the light in a gemstone. Because gemstones have what we would consider optical density, right? It's a denser material than air. When the light enters it, the front of the wavelength strikes the stone and enters the stone and, and slows down and it causes the whole wave front to bend as it enters the stone. And likewise, when it exits the stone, the front of the wavelength exit first, speeds up and exits and bends again. So this piece of equipment essentially measures the bending of the light or the refraction. And it should actually, it could be called the total internal reflectance meter or something like that because really what it's measuring is um, light that reflects off the gemstone back into the refractometer through a scale and up to our eye. And in your course material, you'll read about the critical angle. And in every gemstone, they all have a different critical angle. It's basically a cone. If light strikes within that cone, it exits out of the gemstone. If light strikes outside the cone or outside the critical angle, it is totally internally reflected back into the gemstone. We often call, call that TIR, totally internally reflect, reflected. So, the way that the refractometer works, I know this looks different than the one you have, but it operates on the same principle. The light will enter through the back of the refractometer. It'll go up to this little hemicylinder on the top where it will strike the gemstone. Light that exits the gemstone, going into the critical angle and exiting out, will appear dark on your screen and the rest of the light will reflect back into the refractometer and there's a mirror down here and it will reflect back up to this eyepiece where there's a scale and all you have to do is read the number on the scale and that's the refractive index. In order for the stone to make optical contact we use what's called RI liquid and the RI liquid has a, a refractive index of 1.81 and the glass on the top of your hemicylinder has an RI that's at least that high. The reason we use this is because if we just put the stone on top of the refractometer, there's air between the stone and the hemicylinder, and therefore you won't get a reading of the stone at all. So we make optical contact by using this liquid. So the way that you set it up is you have this really fantastic flex light you turn it on and you place it in back of your refractometer. Lighting is critical. You want to make sure that your scale is well lit. When I do it, I look at the refractometer straight on. So I have my light coming in and I can see the scale on my refractometer. Your scale will be yellow because it has a monochromatic filter on it, mono, one, chromatic color, a one color filter that is yellow. And the reason we do that monochromatic light is white light we know is made up of all colors, it's rainbow. And when we use it on the refractometer, we see a rainbow where we take our reading. If you use one color light, you take away the rainbow and only have the yellow color and you get a division of gray and lighter gray and that's where you take your reading. So we have the light entering our refractometer. If you shake your RI liquid, sometimes you'll hear crunchy things inside. That's sulfur. The RI liquid has sulfur in it. So you have to be cautious because these sulfur crystals have a hardness that's higher than the glass on your refractometer. So you can shake it like this so that you know that there's water or there's liquid on the end of the dropper. You unscrew the top and you wipe a lot of the liquid off inside the bottle and you put a drop of liquid on like the size of a pinpoint of a pin head and you put it in the center of the refractometer 
If you put it higher or lower or over to the left or right, sometimes you have to sneak up on your refractometer to get the reading. So put it in the middle of the refractometer. I'll use this stone. Then you take your stone and you don't use tweezers because your tweezers are steel and the steel can scratch the hemicylinder. So you use a gemstone and we usually start with the table because it's the largest flat facet. But if you find that you can't get a reading from the table because the table has to be very well polished and it has to be flat, if it doesn't give you a good reading, then you'd actually take a reading from one of the pavilion facets. We take the stone and we put it in the middle of the hemicylinder and we look inside of our refractometer and I see how I'm moving my head up and down. What I'm trying to do is see where there's a shadow edge that comes onto my screen. When you first do this, use a stone that you know the RI of. Then you know where you're supposed to be looking. Don't make it a mystery. Start with a known. So you can start with your synthetic ruby, you can start with your amethyst, a stone that has a flat, polished surface. Find out the RI in your book and then put it on the, on the refractometer. So I've got my stone on here and sometimes if you move your head way down, you'll see this complete blackness, which is actually the refractometer's case reflecting inside of the, inside of the scale. You're actually looking for a shadow edge where no matter how many times you go like this, that shadow edge always stops at the same point. At that point where you see the shadow edge, which will be a darker area and a lighter area, you read across it and you read the refractive index. So if you're looking at quartz, it's going to be around 154. If you're looking at your ruby, it's 176 to 177. So on a singly refractive stone, you're only going to get one shadow edge and it never changes. So I've got my stone on top of my refractometer. If you put on too much liquid, you're going to get the RI of the liquid. So if your drop looks too big, you take your stone off with a tissue, you dab it, and you put the stone back on because there's still going to be liquid on the top of the stone. You put your stone back on and oh my gosh, I got the reading. So if it's a doubly refractive stone, we know that it breaks light into two different rays. Each of those rays has a different color, is absorbed differently, and also has its own refractive index. So we want to see both of the refractive indexes of this stone, double refractive, two refractive indexes. So how you do it is I have the stone on top and I just use my fingers and I, I look on my scale and I see that I have the gray line. I have a Polaroid plate on mine and you have on yours too. Remember the Polaroid plate allows polarized light, light that's only vibrating in one direction to come through it. What I'm trying to do with this Polaroid plate is to catch the wavelengths, each of the wavelengths. So I put the stone on and I turn the stone an eighth of a turn and I turn my Polaroid plate a quarter turn one way and then back to the top. I'm doing this, 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 this. And I look to see if the shadow edges are moving. And then I turn it another eighth of a turn, click, click eighth of a turn, click, click, and I look to see how the shadow edges of the stone move. I love doing this on peridot or tourmaline. If you can get a peridot or tourmaline, try it because they have very, very different RIs of the two rays. And the birefringence, the difference between the two rays, is really great and it's really easy to see the two rays. So it's kind of a fun thing to do. So I keep on turning and, and moving the Polaroid plate, turn, move, turn, move, and I'll see that there's a higher and lower number. I write down the high number and I write down the low number and that's the RI of the stone. The difference between the two is the birefringence. Right now we're not measuring to the third place, which is what we have to do, 1523 or 1544. We're just getting 152 to 153. And as long as you get that, I'm absolutely happy. So, what you'll notice sometimes is on stones like a tourmaline or a barrel, one wavelength stays the same and the other one moves either up in numbers or down in numbers. 
If one ray stays the same, that stone's uniaxial, and those are the stones in the crystal systems that end in AL, hexagonal, tetragonal, trigonal. What you may see is stones that have both indices moving, and those are biaxial. Bi means two. It has two directions of single refraction, and those are the stones that are a little bit messier, orthorhombic, monoclinic, triclinic. I remember them uh, messier because they have such a, an unusual symmetry to them. So I can determine its refractive index, I can determine whether it's uniaxial, biaxial, and I can determine the birefringence by the refractometer. When I'm finished with the stone, I take it off. Do not use your stone cloth. Use a tissue to clean the table of the stone because this RI liquid is a little bit uh, caustic and it can melt your plastic and stuff. And then dab the top of the refractometer and get the liquid off. You may end up getting a buildup on your refractometer of sulfur crystals. And I use my fingernails on the edges and clean them off and make sure there isn't a buildup there because you don't want any little crystals uh, gravitating to the table because if you push a stone down on it, it will scratch the, the table. So, key terms. Remember, get your light source right. And if you're finding it's really hard to set it up, you know, you can put little props here in order to get it in or even hold it with your hand. But make sure that your scale is well illuminated, especially since your refractometers have monochromatic light. Use a very small amount of liquid. Make sure you don't have any crystals on your tip of your um, RI wand so that it doesn't uh, transfer to your hemicylinder. Use your fingers. Use a large flat facet. Place it on here. Turn the stone. Turn the Polaroid plate. Stone plate, stone plate, stone plate. And that's it. So that's it for the refractometer. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye!